let's see the part one of optics so today we'll study about the optics right part one of optics so let's see the first question so it is asked in 2021 the lens of largest focal length and largest aperture is best suited as an object of an astronautical telescope since so it is talking about a lens of large focal length a lens of large focal length focal length and large aperture right so So, in the astronautical telescope, focal length of the object lens and aperture is quite large, right? So, astronautical use this telescope. Astronautical. Astronomical. Telescope. Right, focal length. of objective lens and aperture is quite large right due to which light gathering power of telescope used to increase right so due to this reason gathering of light due to which light gathering capacity increases used to increase right and resolving power of ability to objects get increased Due to this reason, resolving power also increases. Resolving power also increases. Right. By using large diameter, fainter objects can be observed. Due to, we are using here large diameter. That's why fainter. Fainter means small size of object can be also resolved or can be seen can be observed right so larger focal length of the object lens contribute in the better quality and visibility images and lens contributes in better quality And visibility increases. Right. So, this is the reason you have to just remember this point. Now, see the next question number second. So, second is find the value of the angle of emergence from the prism. Angle of emergence. Angle of emergence from the prism, from prism, right. Refractive index of the glass is given, that is mu, that is root 3. This is called refractive index, right. So, it is asked in need 2021. Let's see the value. As we know, when any ray of light normally on the surface, then it don't, doesn't face any deviation. So, this is your triangle in which light is incidenting. Angle is 30 degree, this A angle. Angle B is 60 degree. This is your B. This angle is your C. Right. Suppose I am taking this point. 
So when any light is following down on this vertices AB at 90 degree, right? So it will just fall down at this point. This is making an angle of 60 degree. Little bit tilt, right? Due to uh, refractive index change. Refractive index of air is one and this is the glass, right? So it's refractive index is more. So particle will bend towards the normal, right? If I draw the normal line, then this angle will be 30 degree. And this light is coming out from the main path that is emergent. Right. So as we know, incident refractive index is defined as sin i upon sin of r. Right. Now put the value. Incident angle is 30 degree. This one. <clears throat> So, mu is equal to sine of 30 degree divided by sine of r. And we know mu that is root of 3. So, you have to find the value of r angle. So, sine of r equal to nothing but it will be sine of 30. I will take root 3 on this denominator and root r on the right hand side. Right. So, it will be sine of 30 divided by root of 3. Sine 30 means 1 upon 2. Root 30 is root 3 is root 3. So, after solving, you will get this as root 3 by 2, right? So, this will be coming out root 3 by 2. So, sine 60 gives the value of root 3. It means R is your 60 degree angle. So, required deviation in the ray is 60 degrees. So, R is your deviation part whose angle is 60 degree. So, please write it down. Now, see the question number third. So, third is focal convex lens, right? So, it is convex lens A of focal length. L is given, means F value, focal length is given, that is 20 centimeter. And a concave lens, its name is A. Next lens is concave lens, right? Whose name is B? Focal length is given that is 30 centimeter. If the plane mirror were put perpendicular to the plane principal axis, right? Perpendicular to the lens and distance of the 40 centimeter from it, final image would be formed at a distance. This is your 60 centimeter. This is your 40 centimeter. Distance is given. It is asked in need 2021. So let's see the combination. Right. So first lens is. So it's another example. Will graph will be like this or diagram. So this is your principal axis. Now, this is your convex lens A and I will make another lens that is concave lens. So, it will be like this. So, parallel lights are coming in. Right. So, it will first converge. Right. So, property of the concave is converging. Then, this is diverging. So, it will diverge the ray parallelly. So, this distance is D between these two and this is your FB, right, this point. So, total length is F of A. So, F of A we know, right, 20 centimeter. F of B is 5 centimeter. 
So f of b, how much it is coming out to be? 5. Right. So how you have got that? And distance between these, the lens is D. We have taken, right? So I will mark with another diagram. This is the lens between A and B. This is your D value. Right. If B. So. So let's see. So as we know, any parallel beam of light incident on convex lens, then it will meet at the point, right? So property of this convex lens is when parallel lights come, it meets at a point focus, right? If a beam of light gets parallel to the principal axis after refraction, then it will object is the concave. Then D is coming out to be Fa minus F of B. So if we know that is 20, then minus of 5, then it is coming out to be 15. Right. So the required distance between the length should be how much? It should be 15 centimeter. Now see the next point. Now next question is fourth one. Array is incident and angle of incident I on the surface a small angle of prism and emerge normally from the object surface if the refractive index of the material of the prism is mu. So mu is your refractive index. Refractive index. Then the angle of incident is equal to. So let's see the question number four. So we know the mu value that is given 60. Hold for a second. And, and point object is placed at a distance of 60 centimeter, right? So there is convex lens, right? In which object is placed at a point of 60 centimeters. So its distance is 60 centimeter this point this is your 60 centimeter right and a plane mirror is there whose distance from this convex lens is 40 centimeter right now see the explanation a point object is placed at a distance of 60 centimeter from convex lens of focal length 30 centimeter whose focal length is given that is 30 centimeter. If a plane mirror were kept were put perpendicular to the principal axis of the lens and a distance is 40 centimeter. So distance between these two mirror, convex and plane is D. Final image would be formed at a distance of. So let's see the explanation now. So this is a point from which light is emerging on this convex lens so it will then try to converse it right so suppose it is converging at this point so it is forming i1 and again from this plane mirror light is reflecting back and it is joined at this point right so this distance is given 20 centimeter this is 40 this is 30 right so let's use the mirror formula so it is 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f. When minus sign is there, then it is for lens, right? V is your image distance. Image distance. U is your object distance. And f is your focal length. Focal length. Right, so you can find 1 upon V is equal to 1 upon U plus 1 upon F. So it is 1 upon 30 minus of 1 upon 20. Minus of U is 60, right? So this is your U. So here put 60. So 
mu sine is minus so it will be plus now after taking it on this side so it is plus so it is plus and this value is on the left hand side so use this kind sign convention when anything is on the left hand side it is minus and any object or ray is there then take as plus now calculate it 1 upon v is equal to how much it is coming out to be it is lcm is 60 so it will be 2 of minus 1 right so your answer is 1 upon 60 right so v is coming out to be 60 centimeter understood so i will win i will i1 will work as object for plane mirror so this has become object for the second case right second case for this plane mirror this is your plane mirror this will act as an object right so this is on the right hand side so it will be plus so here this is your u1 20 centimeter so use the mirror formula so 1 upon v1 minus 1 of u1 is equal to 1 upon f so 1 upon v1 is equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u1 so it is 1 upon 30 minus of 20 so take the lcm that is 60 it is 2 minus 3 that is minus 1 upon 60 is equal to 1 upon v1 so v1 is equal to minus of 60 centimeter right so now again i2 will be working as an object I2 means you can see here. Wait for a second. Let's see the additional part of this also. Means additional value. Final virtual image will be formed at 60 centimeter from the lens when we can say 20 centimeter behind the mirror, right? So that distance is how much 20 centimeter? We have calculated, right? You can see here in this diagram so it is given 20 centimeter right so this value is 20 centimeter now see the next sum now next sum is fifth one fifth one array is incident and angle of incident that is i on the surface of a small angle prism a so a is nothing but your angle of prism angle of prism emerges normally from the opposite surface if the refractive index of the material is given that is mu so mu is your refractive index then the angle of incident is normally is equal to it is asked in 2020 so let's see the explanation so the light emerges normally from the surface. So its emergent value is equal to zero. So angle of trapezium is so write this condition also for triangular prism. R1 plus R2 is equal to A. And as we know here, E equal to R2 equal to zero. So now put here R2 as 0. So R1 is coming out to be A. Right. So the whole second condition C for surface 1, we can apply now Snell's law. Snell's law. So it is sine of I is equal to mu sine of R1. So it is sine of I is equal to mu sine of A. So, theta is approximately equal to 0 degree. So, I is equal to mu of A. So, we have taken theta as a very small value. Very small value. So, instead of sin I, I have written I is equal to mu. And angle of A becomes A only, right? Due to the smaller value. So, this will be the relation between angle of incident, refractive index and angle of prism so please write it down now next see the sum question number six 
six is talking about in Young's double slit experiment. If the separation between coherent source is half, right? So in Young's double slit experiment, source distance is half. The distance of a screen from the current is doubled. Then the fringe width it is talking about. So let's see that slit between is made half, right? So for fringe width formula is beta is equal to lambda d of small d. This is your fringe width formula. Right, so your D dash is D by 2 and capital D dash is nothing but it is 2 of D. So your new beta fringe width has become now how much it is lambda. This is 2 of D divided by D by 2, right. So it has become 4 lambda capital D divided by small d. So you can see instead of this value you can write beta right so your beta dash becomes 4 of beta right so this is the value we are getting relation between new fringe width and original fringe width so this is the answer now see the next sum that is seventh one so your seventh is talking about brister angle ib right brister angle That is IB for an interference should be. So for the interference, it is talking about interference. So let's see the question number seven. So it is nothing but it is mu is equal to tan of IB. Right. So mu is light between infinity and one. Right, so put here IB, so it is 1 less than 10 of IB is great than infinity, right. So it will become now take the inverse, so it will be 10 inverse of 1 less than IB less than 10 inverse of infinity. So 1 is nothing but it is 45 degree, right. It is IB less than infinity value gives the 90 degree value, right? So you just remember it tan inverse of 1 is nothing but 45 degree and tan inverse of infinity is nothing but it is 90 degree, right? So let's see the, so please remember this relation and explanation also. Now see the question number 8. So, it is talking about two current source of light interference and produce fringe pattern on the screen. For central maximum, phase difference between two waves is given as in Young's double slits experiment. Right. So, path difference. Path difference. That is delta x is equal to d of sine theta. Right. And next one is phase difference phase difference lambda d is equal to 2 pi delta x by lambda so i will put for the central maximum for central maxima theta is equal to 0 so by using the equation 1 and 2 this is your equation 1 this is your 2 so, delta D is coming out to be 0, right? So, when we put delta X as 0, so this whole equation will become 0. So, it is delta D of equal to 0. Understood? So, please write it down. So, let's see the next sum. That is ninth one. Ninth one is talking about an object is placed on the spherical. Principal axis of the concave mirror at a distance of 1.5. So, distance is 1.5 of f, right? Focal length. The image will be. So, for the mirror formula, as we know, that is 1 upon v plus 1 upon u is equal to 1 of f, right? So, this is 1 upon v 
plus one upon minus of one point five into f is equal to one upon minus of f, right? So take this part on right hand side, so it will become one upon v is equal to one point five of f minus of one upon f, right? So I will remove this point, so you will get ten there. So it is ten by fifteen f minus of one upon f, right? So your LCM is fifteen f. So it will become ten minus of fifteen. So it is coming out to be minus five by fifteen f. So it is coming out to be minus one upon three f is equal to one upon v, right? So this is the relation between these two, and so v can be written as minus of three v. So this is the value to it. So please write it down and join again.